Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video, we managed to find the currents I1 and I2 using mesh analysis in this circuit. Now we're going to find the voltage across the resistor, the voltage across the inductor, and we're going to find the power consumed by all of the components in the circuit. Now we can assume that the power consumed by the capacitor and the inductor is zero, but we're going to just check it by just calculating one of them just to make sure that we did it correctly. So first what we need to do is find the voltage across the resistor and then also the voltage across the inductor so we can check the, the power consumed by the inductor. All right, so the voltage across the resistor is going to be equal to the product of the current, which is I1 multiplied times the resistance R. So in this case, I1 is given to us by 5 with the phase angle of 53.13 degrees. And we're going to multiply that times the resistance, which is equal to 8 with a phase angle of 0 degrees. So that means that when we multiply this, we get 40 with the phase angle of 53.13 degrees. And of course, since we're looking for the voltage, that is in terms of volts. So here is the voltage across the resistor. Now we should probably do the same for the inductor. And so the voltage across the inductor is going to be equal to the current I2 multiplied times X sub L. So that is equal to I2, which we have right here, a minus 13.6 with a phase angle of 17.1 degrees. And we're going to multiply that times X sub L. X sub L is J4, so that gives us 4 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so when we multiply that together, that's uh, 50, that's 40, that's 52, that's 54.4. That's, so that would be equal to 54.4 with a phase angle of 17, that would be 107.1 degrees, and that's also in volts. All right, let's see if we did that correctly. That's 40, that's 52, that's 54.4. All right, so now we have the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the inductor. Now we're ready to calculate the power in each of the components. So let's start with the power for the resistor. That's equal to, that would be one half times I max. I max would be I1, that would be five. And you know what? Let me write the equation down just so we remember what that is because I had erased it here. So let's go ahead and write the equation down. It's always a good idea to do that. So the power average equation is equal to one half times I max times V max times the cosine of the difference of the phase angles for the current and the voltage. So that's how we write that. So let's go ahead and find the power for the resistance now. Power for the resistor is equal to one half times I max, that would be five. V max, that would be 40 times the cosine of the phase angle of the current, and the phase angle of current I1 would be right here, 53.13 degrees, 53.13 degrees, minus the phase angle of the voltage, which is also 53.13 degrees. And here's the key, because that is zero, and the cosine of zero is one, so it'd be one times the product of this, that would be a 20 to 100, let's see here, uh, one that's 200, that would be 100 watts. And that would be the power, in this case, the power consumed, the power absorbed by the resistor. So now next, we're going to find the power in our power supply. So let's do power supply one. Power on power supply one, that's equal to one half times the voltage, or no, the current max, that would be I1, which is five, times the voltage, that would be 40, times the cosine of the phase angle difference. So the cosine of the current, which would be I1, 53.13 degrees, minus the phase angle would be zero degrees. And so let's see what that is equal to. So 53.13, we take the cosine of that, that should be 0.6, and now multiply that times, that would be uh, the same as this, that would be, yeah, 60, 60 watts, 60 watts. Now, let's see here, this was uh, absorbed, so the resistor was absorbing 
So we call absorbed. What about this power supply? Since I1 is in the same direction as the polarity of the power supply, this would be uh, the power provided. Okay. Or supplied. I know I, I like to use the word provided, but I think in general most textbooks will write the word supplied, so let's go ahead and do that. So supplied. Okay, next we're going to find the power for the second power supply, which is equal to one-half times. Here we have a minus 13.6 times the, uh, let's see, voltage. That would be up 20 volts times the cosine of, we have the phase angle of 17.1 degrees, for the current minus the phase angle for the voltage, uh, but that would be 90 degrees, which is equal to, all uh, right, so we have 90 minus 17.1. Take the cosine of that because it doesn't matter if we have a negative or positive value there, so take the cosine of that, multiply it times 20, times 13.6, and times 0.5, and we get minus 40. So it's equal to minus 40 watts. Now here it's a little bit tricky. Notice that since the current direction I2 is in the opposite direction to, to the polarity of the power supply, we would then get the watts absorbed because, it, but because it's a negative 40 watts absorbed. That means it is therefore equal to 40 watts supplied. So that would be minus 40 watts absorbed due to the convention of the current direction and the polarity of the power supply. But since it's a negative 40, that turns out around, makes that 40 watts applied. And notice 40 watts applied plus 60 watts applied equals 100 watts absorbed by the resistor, which would imply that the capacitor and the inductor probably do not consume or provide any power. But let's just check to make sure. So now we're going to find the power by the inductor, which is equal to one half times the maximum value for I2, which is a minus 13.6, times the voltage across the inductor, and that would be 54.4, uh, times the cosine of the phase angle, 17.1 degrees, 17.1 degrees minus and the phase angle of the inductor is 107.1 degrees, so minus 107.1 degrees. And notice this minus that gives us a minus 90 degrees, and the cosine of minus 90 is zero. So this is therefore zero watts, just what we're expecting. So no power provided or consumed by the inductor. We can assume that's probably the same for the capacitor. But we do see that the resistor, power supply 1 and power supply 2, when we add those three together, they do cancel out. In other words, all the power supplied by the circuit is equal to all the power absorbed by the circuit. And that's the way it should be. And therefore, we probably, again, did this problem correctly. And that's how it's done.